Hey everybody, today what we're going to talk about is why calorie counting doesn't work. Let's get right into it. It seems like it really should work. It sounds very intuitive. If you simply eat a few less calories, then you should be able to lose weight. Well, the reason we believe this is because it all stems back from the energy balance equation, which looks like this. The fat you gain equals calories in minus calories out. And the thing is that this is always true, but it's usually misunderstood. When you look at this, there are a number of assumptions within this energy balance equation that make it very hard for you to lose body fat. When you look at this, it seems like calories in minus calories out, all you have to do is either reduce the number of calories in, and then you'll lose weight. Or you increase the number of calories out, so you increase your exercise, and automatically you'll lose weight. But there's an assumption in here that's embedded that most people don't see. And the assumption is that these are independent variables. That is, calories in is independent of calories out. That is to say, if what you eat increases the calories out, so assuming you eat 500 more calories, but that increases the, the, the number of calories you expend by 500, then the body fat gain will be the same. On the flip side, which is what we're usually trying to do when we're trying to lose weight, if you eat 500 less calories in a day, but your body responds by reducing the number of calories out by 500, then that will also mean that you're not losing any weight. So the key question is, if this is going to work, is are they actually independent variables? So we can look to the scientific studies to see if calories in and calories out are really independent or not. And they've been done. We've actually done these studies and they've been around for about 100 years or so. The first ones were done in 1917 and it showed that people who ate less also tended to use less calories. It was repeated by Dr. Ansel Keys in the 1940s in his famous Minnesota Starvation Study, which was actually a calorie reduced study. And what he found, of course, was that as you eat fewer calories, your body expends fewer calories. And in the modern era, in this was study was done in the 1970s, so 1971, so more than 50, almost 50 years ago, what they did was they did a very similar study where they're going to give people both sides. So they're going to have people overeat to see if they will, their body is going to respond by expending more calories. And that's in fact exactly what they found. So they had uh, these subjects and they had a 15 day period where they forced people to overeat. They gave them an extra supplement of 1500 calories and this is their metabolic rate. They measured the number of calories that these people were using. So at baseline they were here and as they overate, their bodies actually started to burn more calories. You can see that they're about a 10 to 20% increase in the number of calories out. Now, the flip side, again, is usually what we're interested in if we're trying to lose weight, which is that if you reduce the number of calories you take in, does the number of calories you expend also go down? And that also is true. So here's the diet. Now they did a 15-day period where they ate fewer calories. So this is their metabolic rate. So this is the number of calories they're using in a day. And you can see that it dropped by about 10 or 15%, they're using fewer calories. So the point is that these are not independent variables. That is, if you reduce the number of calories you eat, but your body also simultaneously, because of that, reduces the number of calories expense, it has much less of an effect on weight loss than you would expect. So, in fact, there's been many, many studies like this over the last 50 years. This is a summary of 29 different <laughs> published studies looking at the relationship between calorie restriction and the change in your resting metabolic rate, which is the number of calories that you're going to need in a day. And again, what you can see is that of these 29 studies, the great majority shows around 15 to 20, 25 percent reduction in the number of calories that you're actually going to use 
just due to the restriction in calories. So the point is when these researchers looked at it, what their conclusion was is that the first thing you can say about calorie restriction is that with some certainty that a decrease in energy expenditure is a universal response to energy restriction. That is, if you eat less, then your body is going to use less. And if you go back to that energy balance equation, that's going to limit the amount of body weight that you're going to be able to use. So what about the flip side? What if you were to increase the number of calories out? That is, if you are able to increase your exercise, well, assuming that you eat the same, then you're going to be able to lose weight. Well, is that really true? Well, when you look at the studies, what they did in this study is they measured exactly how much people ate more compared to the energy they were expending. And this is done in kids, and this was published in 2008. And they did different things. So they said, okay, let's measure kids watching TV. Well, how much increase in calories are they going to get by uh, per hour of watching TV? And it's about 102. So if you're doing nothing, you're just, uh, you know, uh, just watching TV, you're on average going to be gaining, so you're using about 100 calories less per hour than you're using. But what you'll notice is that moderate physical activity actually shows almost the same effect. If you're doing some moderate activity, so this is 3.5 METs or metabolic equivalent, so this is the equivalent of like a light jog or something like that, what's going to happen is that you're going to stimulate your appetite so that in a free living situation, that increase in exercise actually tends to make you eat more such that you're actually in a net positive balance, almost the same as watching TV and not even as good as doing homework, for example. Or, or, you know, if you do vigorous activity, yes, you can start to get even. So, you know, doing fairly strenuous activity, you can, be this, you, you, you can come the same and be about the same as doing homework. And then you have to get to extremely high levels of activity before you will actually get yourself into a caloric deficit. And that's the reason why it's very difficult to lose weight just doing exercise, unless you're at a sort of Olympic, sort of uh, national level caliber, and you're doing it for two, three, four hours at a time. What you're mostly going to be in is either neutral or actually on the plus side. That is, you're working up your appetite so that you're tending to eat more and putting yourself in a positive caloric balance. So again, the problem is that the calories in, the exercise that you do, has an effect on your appetite or what you're going to eat. And that's going to limit the benefit of counting calories. So this entire idea that you can simply eat a little bit less or move a little bit more to lose weight is actually built on this assumption that these are independent of each other and that's not true. We've known it's been not true for many decades. If you simply eat less, your body will use less. If you try to move more, you'll tend to eat more. And both of those things are going to lead to no weight loss. And that's why calorie counting doesn't really work for weight loss. And that's not just my opinion. Millions and millions and millions of people have tried calorie counting. And we know from practical experience that there's a very, very poor way to lose weight. And that's it for today. And this is why calorie counting doesn't really work for weight loss, even though it seems like it should. If you want to learn more about calories and losing weight, make sure you check out my website, thefastingmethod.com. You can also check out the suggested videos below. And if you like this, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notification. All right. Goodbye, everybody.